Every stitch we make, make a history, mate. Pay attention, no tension on this we make. If the shadow broke, then we fix it in. If the pattern's dope, then we stitch it in. Pay attention in, I'm a mission in. Call up a couple friends, say we stitch in. Hope we got the flaws, then we not. Hi guys, welcome to Stitching It. My name is Stephanie, and this is my YouTube channel about my hobby of needlework and cross stitch. So, welcome. And um, it's just the beginning of June and I can't believe that summer is almost here because we haven't hardly spent any time, you know, outside and out and about like we normally would, you know, and the heat is starting to arrive in Georgia. <laughs> so um, I don't know what's going to happen this summer if it's really going to feel like summer, you know what I mean? Um, but there's so many things going on in the country right now that is, you know, really disturbing and upsetting to me, you know, that um, my cross stitch has really been a source of comfort for me. And um, so I wanted to show some things that have come out of being at home all this time. You know, a lot of, not a lot of people, but some people, um, started showing their finishes a few weeks after staying at home and it's taken me a little bit longer <laughs> to um to finish some things up but I'm happy to show them to you today and I'm glad you're here so the first finish I wanted to show you I finished up a little bit before Memorial Day and um it's really a, a sweet little patriotic piece by Lindy Stitches called a stitch for sweet freedom and um I was able to stick it in an 8x10 frame. Um, this is on 32 count linen and the pattern is sized to fit inside a standard size photo frame, um, you know, which was really convenient for finishing, you know, and I love the way it turned out, you know, this frame really complements her skin tone as far as I'm concerned. Um, but over the past week or two, uh, I've really, you know, I've really enjoyed having her displayed in my home you know, but it's taken on a little bit more meaning because um, there aren't that many patterns of of women and people of color in the cross stitch world, and um, and in general, you know, the cross stitch world is not what I would call really diverse, although it could be. So um, you know, it encourages me to see patterns and designers um, make patterns that aren't from an Indo-European perspective although when you look at this pattern you know um, to me you know I see a contrast between the idealistic nature of the pattern the way things should be the way things ought to be and the way things are today and it makes me a little bit sad um, of course, when I see all the things that are going on around us in our country today, um, and then on the other hand, it makes me feel a little bit better when I'm able to show, um, you know, something hopeful and something that, like I said, that, that, that shows the way we want things to be. So I don't want to get political or anything like that, but I do want to say that, we, um, you know, we as stitchers, you know, look forward to having our work preserved and handed down over the generations. And what we stitch sends a message to future generations about what was important to us. And um, if you're planning to stitch something and to take care of it and save it and pass it on, you know, I just would like to ask, consider, uh, you know, stitching um, people that are representative of the world today, you know, and the ideas that we believe in uh, today. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy the way that this turned out. You know, like I said, um, it's on 32 count linen. This is from Color and Cotton. And I love, 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 love that skirt. Um, you know, I picked my own colors. I, I do want to say that, you know, if you are interested in um, stitching her, I used uh, roasted chestnut color from from Classic Color Works and then black coffee for her hair. And um, 
like I said, I, I'm really happy the way she turned out. So, um, after Stitch Mania was over and I had a nice quick little finish, I wanted to get back to my yearly goals. <laughs> since it is almost halfway through the year, you know, and um, I was able to finish up um, a big piece, one of my yearly goals, the first of it, which is the Greyhound, if you haven't uh, um, visited my channel much before. Um, I have showed this repeatedly, and I'm now going to show it to you completely finished, and I'm very, very happy and excited about it. This is a picture that's going to be for my aunt. She has greyhounds and really loves the breed. And um, she has several pieces of greyhound art in her house. So um, now she's going to have one more. You know, uh, this, I'm really ecstatic the way it turned out. It was, um, you know, the detail is good. I love the way that those colors fade into the fabric just perfectly. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, like I said, I really did enjoy it. You know, I can't make myself stitch anything, really. You know, I, I can only facilitate what I want to stitch somehow. You know what I mean? So, um... I did really enjoy it, and I hope she's really going to like it, too. It was on 36 count linen from uh, Picture This Plus, but um, this was a project that I started in 2018, and so it took me about a year and a half from start to finish, and um, I did make a little uh, slideshow progression to show for Instagram, so I'm going to show that, pop that in here now for you to see real quick. So I'm really happy the way that turned out. And, um, you know, I, I, um, am deeply personally influenced by, uh, by my grandmother who was also a stitcher. She mostly did needlepoint, but, um, and she passed away in 1987. But, um, you know, all through my childhood, whenever I visited my grandparents' house, um, she they always had you know all of her house was need was dis, you know displayed in her you know projects and things like that and after my grandfather passed away um you know they they broke up the house basically and i did get a few of her pieces um so i wanted to show you these two um dog head portraits that she did that resembled their dog i don't even know um, when she completed these, but I do know that they were, um, one of her early, you know, earlier works. So, um, these are the two that I have. Like I said, she, um, did these in needlepoint, and I don't know much about them because, uh, you know, they aren't really labeled on the back. My grandfather framed them himself, you know, and, um, but I do know that this one they had a they had a you know a basset hound beagle mix whatever named Sam, and so that's one of the reasons why she decided to stitch these is she wanted something that that um, that that paid you know a dedication to him. And what's funny now is that we actually have a dog named Max who's a beagle basset hound you know mix, and he looks you know pretty pretty similar to this. This is really, you know, a basset hound, but, um, I'll give you a little bit close up, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so you can see it is needlepoint. Um, and I would assume that these are kits, you know, because she did mostly work with kits, you know, because those were, that was what was mostly available, you know, 
um, but I don't know anything about these otherwise. But since I did do the the dog head portrait for my um, aunt, and I always saw these whenever I was going over to my grandparents' house, you know, they were always right there in on display. You know, when you walked in the garage, you know, in from the garage, um, in an office area. <sighs> Oh, there's some missing stitches there. I don't know if they've gotten damaged over the years, and I don't know what to do about if you know anything about how to... I'll show you. Looks like they may have gotten... Let's see if I can get the focus. There it is. There's some stitches that might have gotten damaged over the years, and I'm not sure exactly how I would go about repairing them, or if I should just try to be aware of it. This is on a spaniel mix, but she has served as a as a great source of inspiration for me. These are now on display in my living room, and um, so after stitching the greyhound for my aunt, you know who, um, let's see now. I decided that I wanted to go ahead and do another dog portrait um, to sort of as a. A, a dedication to our Rottweiler Maddie <laughs> and um, I did find I finally found a kit that not only was a Rottweiler that looked kind of like our Rottweiler looks you know and reminds me of her so um, I, I got that from 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 Pana I guess is how you say it Pana Pana you know I, I ordered from mybobbin.com and um, I'll show you a picture of the kit Let's see now. So this is it. And I'm swapping out the Ada from the kit for more 36 count linen. And I'm doing it very similarly to the to the Greyhound. Um, except I'm doing it on blue fabric. A blue fabric. So it'll be similar. As you can tell these needle points are on blue we have a blue background so I'm doing a Rottweiler um, on it's actually the same cut of 36 count whimsical winter uh, that I'm doing the four elements on and this is the start that I have on that I'm up there in the ear right now but I'm very happy um, so far with this kit um, I'll show you the the Greyhound was actually 155 by 155 and this is going to be a little bit smaller which I'm glad for um, which is 132 by 142 so it's about 20, 20 stitches uh, less this way and 10 stitches on the vertical so that's been a recent start and I'm really going to enjoy you know, it gave me thought about my needlework legacy or things that I'm going to leave behind. And, you know, because these needle points that my grandmother did, they're very important to me. But how do I express to the next generations, you know what I'm saying, uh, what's important to me and what's worth preserving? And I wanted to, um, you know, really build on what she left behind, you know, by, um, by, by working on a project that will complement, I feel like, and will go with and make the set um, work together rather than um, just being standalone pieces that no, that that people in the future wouldn't be sure sure about what they're doing, you know? <laughs> so um, that was my thought behind that. But now that I've finished um, The Greyhound and um, that's one of my yearly goals that I have crossed off, Okay, um, I do want to get back to my other two goals, which are to keep on trying towards the finish on His Eyes on the Sparrow, and, um, uh, oh yeah, and um, I made a set of goals to try to do four pages worth um, on A Stitch in Time for the year. So, those, I've got the rest of the year to try to get those done. But I wanted to show you one more project that I've been, um, whoa, that all fell out on the floor. 
Um, this is one that I have wanted to show you. It's sort of a long-term project, and it's not... Um, it's not something I'm trying to complete this year, but um, it's another gift. This is, you know, I just did one for my aunt, and I was just trying to finish that up before I worked on one that was for my parents and I showed you two needle points and I'm still trying to do to learn and to do needle point as well so um, this is my, my parents went to Italy twice before you know I guess they did it they did their traveling at a good time uh, it was all last year and the year before and before any of this all started happening and um, they bought a, they they did some spent some time in Tuscany and they got a watercolor image from an artist of the poppy fields and this is a kit that comes from dimensions I'll show that it's called Tuscan poppies and it is a needlepoint kit and it looks very very similar you know at least the image you know to the watercolor and the fields that they saw over there so um so my mom purchased this kit <laughs> for me to work on and I've started it and you know it is a printed canvas and this is definitely different from cross stitch but I'll show you what I've got so far um, up in this corner a lot of sky and some of the mountains so it's going pretty well I've also got some down in the bottom just starting on uh, some of the poppies, you know, um, this is a pretty big, this is on 15 by 17 inch stretcher bars, okay? So it's a big kit, especially for, I have practiced some needle, needle point before, but I haven't actually finished a needle point piece. So this, you know, would be my first straight up needle point piece if I did it. And this, since it's by dimensions, it's done with um, six strands of floss and that you separate. You separate all six strands of floss and then you put them together. And, um, you know, one of my friends from the EGA taught me to um, get a little hair iron, you know, a straightening iron, just, you know, a little travel one about this big and run it over the six strands after you put them together. And it really comes out looking much nicer and smoother on the canvas so that's what takes most of the time is when you're getting when you're getting your 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 floss separating it putting it back together running the iron over it and then starting filling in all those areas of color so that's fun I mean it really is kind of fun but it's not cross stitch you know um, the canvas is okay it's okay. I do like, I have to admit, I do like stitching on fabric, you know, a little better, but, um, but it's, it's kind of fun to learn two different techniques. So that's what I've been working on. Um, and I'm June. Okay. When it comes to plans, it, you know, I think that right now I'm gonna going to, um, stick with the finishes. I've got a couple other projects that are getting close to um, finishes and I'm really feeling working on my stash right now. I'm not feeling a start, the starts, you know, so um, that's a good thing as, as far as I, I, I can tell, you know, when, when I'm not starting something and I do actually feel like working on the stuff that I have um, and in the climate everything is, you know, you know, I'm just trying to to take care of myself and my family and I hope you guys are doing the same and that you guys are staying safe and um, you know uh, I, I'm I'm nervous about what is gonna happen this summer you know I don't I don't feel um, particularly you know what I would say like creative or in that sort of um, mode but like I said stitching has been a real big comfort for me and it's not just about you know it is about um, keeping your mind in a place where you can keep on doing the normal things that we have to do you know like I said when when you see things on online or on TV that that are really bothersome 
you know, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, it was nice to sit down and have a, uh, have a chat with you guys and I look forward to seeing you guys in a few weeks. So thanks for watching.